What's up, guys? Casey and George back with GBR on another Tuesday night here. Of course, before we get started, we got to thank those sponsors that make GBR possible every Tuesday at 5 Eastern. You see that live symbol back there? That's These are who helps us keep that live symbol up. TSR Racing Products, Champs Performance Parts. You can use the code GBR, by the way, so that way they can... Uh, Get you a little bit of discount over there. BRG 3D printed parts. Syntex printing out there in Temple, Texas. Driven racing oil. Use the code GBR10. Get yourself 10% off your order over there. And our newest partner, Proform Parts. Visit ProformParts.com. They got thousands and thousands of SKUs. Get your hot rod in order for 2023. George, I just saw the craziest thing, man. I just got to say it. I saw the craziest thing right before we were getting on this stream. Dragzine just posted a video of people in Brazil, and it looks like they're drag racing a no prep race with pro mods on like a Formula One looking track. They're actually drag racing around a bend. It's the most insane thing I've ever seen, and it's no prep. So how do you make no prep sketchier than that? Yeah, the um, the, the key words you used there were were insane, and I generally don't do insane things, especially steering a pro mod car seemingly in a circle that just doesn't i'm gonna have to check that out i haven't seen it yet put it that way i'm gonna have to check that out but it's uh it's gotta be i'm not i'm not gonna do that man so definitely as a shout out real quick if you guys missed it we done a, a how to uh, instructional or open box whatever you want to call it for the crew chief pro software uh definitely had a great time doing that that software is very neat I'm, I'm real far into it now as I've been playing with it, kind of like a kid in the candy store. I have to touch everything and be told a thousand times to stop doing it. Well, I'm not going to stop Crew Chief Pro. So de check that out and give uh, Crew Chief Pro a look. It's uh, definitely a very nice software. Man, on top of that, dude, I've, I've been looking through Facebook here and noticed, I mean, it's been buzzing. I don't know why it's been buzzing so hard, but then I started playing and I'm starting to understand myself. Somehow and in some way, um, our either the younger minds or maybe a little bit younger uh, kids or whatever the case might be came up with a bracket racing game inside of the Roblox game that is extremely, extremely accurate. Um, and uh, and so I've been playing it. You ought to see some of these cars they've been making the replicas. And so I wanted to shout that out and more to come on it and uh, before we get off and going. But it looks like Robert Joseph Mur Murphy and uh, Jordan, uh, you guys are doing a great job out there. Donnie, um, Rashid, NHRA 101, thanks for everything you guys are doing for the bracket racing community. Keep your eyes on that. It's going to get pretty big. But um, we won't prolong you. As you know, we have a guest today, and, and we don't want to eat up all of his time as well. Uh, coming in here, Galen Rollison. New owner, uh, if you didn't know, of Golfport, um, the racetrack in Golfport there. So, Galen, how's it going? What's up, fellas? How are y'all doing? Thanks for having me. Hey, you got Absolutely. it. Thanks for coming back. And, you know, if, is, if you've been following Going Bracket Racing, we've had Galen on a few times now. And uh, we will continue to do so until he says, I'm tired of doing it. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if he'll do that. So, Galen, man, let's talk about 2022. And I mm -hmm. just want to start right off the bat. With that junior dragster race that you threw, what I would, I'm just going to call it, that's going to be the GOAT of junior dragster races from this point forward, in my opinion. I'm up, I'm open for debate on that as well. So just hit me on going bracket racing inbox. We can talk. Galen, how did you, how did that race come about? What did you feel that that race um, was a success to you? Or do you have a little work to do for the next year? Well, for 2022, we started toying with that a year or so ago. Uh, Tommy Castaneda and I, we talked about, you know, and we talked about how junior dragster racing really, for the most part, on a bracket racing part, it really didn't have a, uh, a staple event. I know that, and that's not a knock to the, the Eastern Western Conference Finals. It really isn't, you know, but, you know, there's, they have indexes and things like that, and, you know, it, they these parents they spend a lot of money to go to the races and you know they didn't have that twenty thousand dollar race to go to that, that that could be their like i said staple event and we talked about it and um a lot of our we reached out to some of our potential sponsors bow shaker motorsports and one of them and we spun up by them asking what do they feel about it and uh it just went off from there and then we got this crazy idea man how do we get 
or try to assemble the best field of 32 or 64 junior racers in the country. And we said, well, one way to do it is do a free 10 grander. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, we, we made a, we made an action plan and, uh, we released the event and, uh, and it just took off from there. When we started doing raffles for this event, for the side races, and they were filling up in 30 seconds, we knew we had a tiger by the tail. Awesome. Definitely, man. And it's it's really cool that you guys are doing something like that, too, because, uh, I mean, at this point, probably 20, 25 years ago, something like that now, uh, I caught the tail end of the major junior dragster scene, like right whenever everything, you know, when it was new. This would have been like the late 90s and stuff like that. Um and they had the junior dragster nationals at Indy where everybody came to Indy and it was like the U S nationals of junior drag racing. And there hasn't been anything like that since then, since they divided it up. Um, we quit going to them after, after it left Indy cause I was raised in Southern Illinois. Indy wasn't that far, but we aren't going to go all the way to Bristol. Uh, my dad was a farmer. We had to stay home. So, okay. uh, you know, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really cool to see that there is something that now all the junior dragster racers look forward to again, uh, in in your race, mm -hmm. yeah, it was it, it it was a great event, man. We uh um we ended up selling the event out. Um, we were oversold, and we came in. I think we ended up having two hundred and thirty one two twenty one uh, register. Um, we we knew we we oversold by a percentage, thinking we'd have about a ten percent drop. And I mean, we got we got lucky, and it was right after that. I think we had one ninety nine in the um in the twenty grander. So. But all in all, man, the event we felt like was a big success. So we we definitely learned a lot because, you know, I've been fortunate to be able to be doing this for almost 18 years now, and I've never done a junior only event. And uh, um, there was a learning curve for us, but I think the results spoke for themselves. I think the parents, the racers, the sponsors were really pleased. And uh, man, we're that. You know, I've been able i've been like i said i've been blessed to be able to put on some pretty big events you know guaranteed millions two of them dream team races i don't know that that event kind of that that been it, it sticks with me i feel like we did something bigger <laughs> i don't know what it is it's just the feeling saturday morning luke bogacki spoke on it um when he was there and he said saturday morning when you woke up and Racers were racing for twenty grand, and that was the day one of the Invitational. It felt different, and that was it was a unique experience, man. Um, it was it was just different. We woke up that morning, and I, I went to the tower and got my phone out, and I started blaring that song by Imagine Dracks. It was natural, natural, and uh, <laughs> on the radio, man. Everybody come out of their motorhome, man. They were jacked up, man. It, it was cool, man. Yeah, man. It's. I, I'd imagine it would be. We actually have a uh, comment over here in the YouTube chat side of things. Uh, Nova fan saying King of the Coast is the best series running. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, how it went with King of the Coast and GABR and things like that in 2022. It was, um, you know, every year, every year has its challenges. You know, you have to adapt to your atmosphere. You know, the King of the Coast has been around since 2005 and, and great American bracket races has been around since 2009, I believe or 10. Um, last year rain really, you know, was, it affected us more than it usually, usually does. And, you know, we, we lost probably half of our, uh, I think three of our, three of our, three or four of our King of Coast events never got off the ground. We had two that had rain, but I mean, one thing I've learned over the years is stressing over the weather really doesn't do any good for you because there's, there's nothing you're going to be able to do to change it. You're not going to be able to go outside, turn a big fan on and push it the other way. <laughs> you know, it's just, it just says what it is. And all you can do is make the best possible decisions you can with the information you have at the time and, you know, do the best you can. But this, this season went good, man. We, uh, um, we crowned more champions in the King of the Coast series. We had a top bowl 150, a foot break 150. We did a Turkey Beach Bash on the Great American side. We did the red, white, and blue um, last January, which was a rescheduled date. Uh -huh. um, the Dream Team, you know, we did that where we had 570 entries. And then we did the Hunter Grander at, at M Montgomery. So, I mean, um, we had a lot of racing. And uh, um, the races we got in, you know, we um, 
seemed for the most part everything went well. Definitely, definitely. So looking back at that and, and kind of moving in and, and, and piggybacking off of a little bit of the things you've said with weather, we get the news that broke, and I believe it broke today about the Stars and Stripe event being moved, not canceled, moved into December, if I saw that right. Um, and then on top of that, uh, all pre-entries and refunds would be handled by yourself and um, and sent back to those races and not credited. Tell us a little bit more about that. I'm going to slide the schedule across as well. Well, no, this event was supposed to have been the week, the week between Christmas and New Year's. Well, we had a horrible forecast, and, you know, these decisions you make, this one it really gets difficult when promoters – when it gets hard because you you got to because you feel like you're not going to make everybody happy but that don't mean you don't keep trying to make everybody happy and you know the weather was really bad and um we ended up postponing it to this weekend well this weekend is almost a mirror image of our forecast i think saturday and sunday is um most of your regional forecast have 80 plus percent saturday and sunday if we just had rain one day, you know, maybe you can do a 15 or 20 and a 10. But when you have two thirds of your weekend with a lot of rain in it, you start calculating your odds of getting things in. And, you know, it just seems like the risk wasn't worth the reward on anybody's level. So to save people that four, $5 plus gallon of diesel, um, mm. it just made sense. Just well, We just did away with the event and we just make sure everybody know that this event will happen again in December. And on the super team challenge, you know, racers had uh, pre-registered um, um, before I got on the, we announced this morning, we will issue refunds to, to the cards you registered with. And that's what I did before I uh, come live on here. I got, got home from work, issued all the refunds and right to the card. And so that racers should see their, their $50 refunds in three to seven business days. So, um, you know, that's, that's just part of it, guys. I mean, you, you try to pick the, try to pick your weekends, and I wish I had a big crystal ball, but I don't. And you just do the best you can and, and control the things that you can control. Absolutely. Exactly. And speaking of uh, getting home from work, I can't imagine that uh, you're doing much more than always getting home from work and going back to work, man, because I know that, uh, you know, a, a little while back, I saw something saying that you and a couple other people purchased Gulfport Dragway. So in case you didn't have enough hats to wear, you got a couple more now that uh, that you need to be wearing too. So what prompted you to purchase a racetrack? Because, you know, now you're literally involved with every single facet that is drag racing at this point. Yeah, we took over the track uh, December 1st. Um, it's one of those things that... For, and for a lot of people, Gulfport Dragway is more than just a racetrack to me. Gulfport Dragway's been around for 50 years, and it's part of it's part of my life. And I remember as a kid going there with my dad and my mom, and my, my brother Daniel was still in a, a playpen. You know, I remember my brother being out in, the, out in the middle of the field. My mom would stick him in a playpen, let him play around, and we go watch dad race. And, you know, I just felt like that, you know, an opportunity – it was possible for for me to carry on and for me, Britt and Tommy, to carry on the legacy of Gulfport Dragway. And I mean, as Grant Cardone says, I'm not sure y'all know who Grant Cardone is. He's a he's an investor guy. He says sometimes you have to to grow, you have to go back to zero. Wow. And <laughs> you know <laughs> that, that was that was powerful, man. And you don't really realize what that means till you actually do it. You got to get back to zero to grow. And that's what we did. You know, we went all in, and you know so. It's uh, it's more than obviously we're doing it to for a financial piece of it, but you know, I feel like if you do things, if you chase the dream and not the money, the money's gonna take care of itself. Yeah, that yeah makes, the, you got a case. The cool part about uh, about you guys being involved with with Gulfport to the extent that you are now is that, you know, the the biggest thing you always hear as far as negatives go at, on a weekly basis from from somewhere you know, across the drag racing community is, oh, someone made this decision and they did it for this reason, they did it for that reason. You guys literally have every single perspective, promoter perspective, now racetrack owner perspective and driver perspective of a competitor. And, you know, I just, 
I personally believe that that's going to settle a lot of these arguments in that scenario because you guys can legitimately get amongst every all of yourselves and say, hey, this is what's happening. What do we do? And you can find the positives and negatives, do a pro and con list, make literally the right decision because you have every single facet. You can look at it from every single angle. Yes. And I, Casey, that is that is a phenomenal point to make because the team that we've assembled, myself, Britt Cummins and Tommy Castaneda, um, we all I feel like we all bring something to the table that makes that team strong. And I think our team is what's is the reason we're going to be successful because we have a great team. You know, Britt has been a Britt has been around the sport almost as long as I've been on Earth, and you know he's raced at a bunch of tracks, so he has a great perspective on things. Um, Tommy, you know, Tommy's the business guy, man. He's you know he he's the guy that you know can kind of look into the future and fi- and see things as they may happen. And, you know, I feel like I just bring hard work to the table. That's all I've ever known to do is work, you know. And so I feel like just the three of us together, I think it's a – and the people we have around us, we've always felt that, you know, to be successful, not just in what we're doing but in life, you have to be able to surround yourself with people you can trust. And I know that I have that between me, Britt, and Tommy, our families, you know, because my wife Jennifer, my daughter Morgan, and Kendall are really active, actively involved. Tommy's wife and daughter are actively involved. Britt's uh, wife, Miss Deanna, she's involved. So, I mean, we we we, we got a strong team, and I you know we appreciate the the fallacy and everything. Is sometimes I get too much credit when it's a team. It's it's not me. I promise, it's not me. I'm just a small part of this picture. We, you know, there's no I in team, and you know, it's just. We're just working together. We all we all do our things. Some days we have to get fifty percent. Some days we have to pick up the slot and give eighty. You know, it's just you know, you, you do what you got to do for the for the well being of the team. And on top of it, uh, another thing that people don't realize is I was looking at uh, I was looking at I want to say Google Maps or something one day, and I was just checking out where Gulfport was because I'm in North Carolina, so it's a ways. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it looks like it's it's kind of like a destination type place because the beach is like. You could ride a scooter to it from there if I was if I'm thinking of the right track. Is that yeah. the right? And yeah, then casino. Absolutely. You know, Gulfport is a destination racetrack. It's an older facility with a lot of character, but as the old timers say, as the crow flies, <laughs> you know, you, you could literally be at the racetrack if you drove a straight line from Gulfport to the right to the beach. You'd be there in at most five minutes. Wow, it's, mm-hmm. it's right there. And with beaches comes with restaurants, hotels casinos the key thing with gulfport is when you come to gulfport everything that you need is five minutes away the next wow. exit is more hotels you can shake a stick at two walmarts the movie theaters three <laughs> shopping malls i mean it's everything that you need is just is there and i think that's what a lot of what the drive is to gulfport dragway lucas walker texted me this morning man it's like man I hope we can race because I love coming to Gulfport, and so it's it's uh it's it's a unique place. It's an older place. It has a, like I said, it has a lot of character, and uh, it's yeah. But it, it's the beach is right down the road. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, and I know it's not very far from me here in Texas. So as I formulate what I'm gonna do for next year, I've definitely got my eyes on on maybe coming down to a few races down there in Gulfport. Uh, Gulfport. Maybe I'll even get an Airbnb or something that I hear. Are, there are pretty quite a few of those nearby the track as well. And uh, mm-hmm. just kind of post up with me and the family. Um, the wife would really love a beach, I'm sure of that. So get there a few days early before I make her check the air in my tires. <laughs> yeah, so. well, you know, my wife and my family and I, we're, we're blessed enough to be able to live right off the beach. And there's Airbnbs are right around us. So whenever you're ready, man, you let me know. I can, uh, do, all, I can do all the groundwork for you. Right on, right on. So... <laughs> So, and and as we continue moving through this stream here, I was, I think Casey might have been live on Monday Morning Racer uh, with, a, with a few good guys there. I think Dragon Drive might have been on there. Um, oh, and, yeah. Um, I broke yeah. the news this for you. <laughs> you did, you did. So I'm texting Casey while he's live because you guys are on Drag Champ, you and Britt. And next thing you know, a monstrosity of a race gets announced over there. So you know I got to talk about it over here on Going Bracket Racing. What I think uh, definitely is going to be a highlight race, you guys, the new USA 500K at Capital City. 
-hmm. races surround. I'll, I won't even give any details. Tell me about this race, the 500K that we're going to look at uh, October 17th through the 21st. Well, you know, we, uh, we, we've had some experience with races there. We've done a guaranteed million there. We've done 100K there, and we have a great relationship with that staff, mainly Ben Willis. You know, Ben does a great job with that facility. He and his team have really turned that whole facility from the ground up into a if not a premier, if not the premier facility in the southeast. And we, we had our 100K weekend September this year. But, you know, um, the bracket racing schedule seems kind of changed a little bit in which some races, a lot of races would be going from the spring fling directly to the new day for the junior. And we, you know, incorporated with our date. We just felt like that, you know, that was going, you know, to hinder the event um, uh, a little bit. And when the October date um, came available, we just felt like that would be a win-win. You know, we could get away, we could get away from that back-to-back -back events and uh, we, Ben reached out to us, and we reached out to Ben, and uh, we think that October day will be the weekend after the Mike Smith Memorial Race. Yep. Um, so it's a uh, we feel like and racers are generally that weekend of the year. You know, they usually that's their big weekend of the year to go racing. So that weekend came available, so we felt like that we could put ourselves in a position to be successful. Gotcha, gotcha. And you surrounded that race. It's 500K, yeah, that's that's wonderful. But even more wonderful are the 40Ks that surround it, if, I, if I'm seeing this correctly. Um, I know there's not quite a flyer yet, but when you get it, I'll be I'll be sure and get it out to the GBR uh, Facebook page. But 40K is surrounding that race as well. That's uh, that's getting it done in a big way. Yeah, so what, just to give everybody an overview, the, the 500, the, the event weekend will be capped at 385. Um, the re the main reason for the 385 is, is we want to be able to get done. We want to be able to get done at a reasonable hour and for people to be able to enjoy their time at the track. You know, I mean, it isn't, and now me and Brent have been on the, the side too. When you get a lot of cars, sometimes everything has to go near perfect just to even get done at a halfway decent hour. And, you know, October, you know, it can be tricky. You know, it could be good weather. It could be a little chilly. You just, you really don't know. So we felt like if we capped it at 385 all the way across, um, that would maximize the opportunity as, as, as finishing at a, at a decent time. Of course, you know, there's some variables that, you know, you can never, you know, downtime that could come up that there's nothing you're going to do about. But we felt like if we did that, we would, again, maximize the chance to, to get done earlier. And the 500K, uh, it'll be capped at 385. Um, It'll have a pre-registration, obviously, with a cap. Um, I think the cool thing is around money. It'll have the thousand-dollar round money, but after the it'll, it'll be a thousand-dollar round money for the third round, one or fourth round. But then it goes from two thousand to four thousand to six thousand. Yes. It increases by double. So yes. um, it's a it's a great race. I, I have a lot of faith in it. Actually, I think it's going to do really well. I think it's going to sell out really, really fast. Yeah. And uh, we're excited. We're, we're excited to go back to. Uh, Capital City Motorsports Park in, in October. I agree, man. I think that there's a lot of people that uh, that like those uh, capped races, kind of like your skin, because they know what they're in for when they get there. They know that, uh, you know, even if there's a couple of oil downs or something, because like, that's another thing, man, being in October, there could be oil downs because everybody's stuff's worn out. Because guess what? Those guys that are still winning rounds, they've been winning rounds all year because it's usually mm -hmm. their year if they're at a race like that. But the thing is that whenever you have stuff that's uh, whenever you have stuff that's capped, then you can kind of, like you said, you can kind of be like, well, you know, after this race is over, we'll we'll go out to eat. But you know, you can actually go out to eat at like eight o'clock or something like that. And more importantly, the person who wins this five hundred thousand dollar race, everybody's still going to be awake because it's going to, uh, what time did uh, Jeff Sarah win the, the great American million or Tyler Bohan and also, cause the sun was still up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was up. And they were able to, you know, it's, you almost feel like it's a, you, you've done a decent a disservice to that racer when they win maybe the biggest race of their career and it's late at night and there's no one there to celebrate them with it. You know, that's, that's not what we want. And, 
you know, again, we've been on that side where we've had to do that and everybody else has, but, you know, we just felt like if we try to put something in place to prevent that from happening, it, it would, you know, it, it, it'd be a good thing. So it's a, Right, and since uh, since we're talking about these these types of races, you have the the top bulb and the foot brake one fifties, mm -hmm. and the reason it's one hundred and fifty is because everybody's doubled, right? If you pay the entry, you're automatically doubled, so there's no kind of uh, well, so and so's doubled, so and so only can afford the single things like that. If you afford the entry, you're on the same level as everybody else. Absolutely right. And that was the whole theory of that is exactly what you said is it's the person that will double. It saves them a little bit of money and the person that can't double gets a second injury. So it just seemed like it may, and it's worked, it worked for us. And I have a lot of people scratching my head, man, how do you make that work? Well, we just do. I mean, it, mm -hmm. uh, it's a great, I think, I think it's, I think it's a unique format and, um, I've, I've, I've started to see it, you know, being replicated at other, other events which is which is fine you know I, I mean to each their own but it it i mean like our foot break 150 has like 13 spots in it left and it that's not till the end of march our top ball 150 had which is the beginning of march i think we have 25 spots left wow. it's a great format and we get done early i mean we get done early especially down here it's important because people love get done early they love hitting the restaurants the local seafood restaurants they love hitting the casinos and so i mean it's it's more than just about the race, it's the experience for the weekend. Well, and especially, you know, going back to the whole thing about Gulfport being more of a destination type place than people totally realize. Like when you get people, for example, you said, uh, I think you said Lucas Walker was saying he was hoping you were going to race because he wanted to come so bad. Well, you know, from a guy coming, I think Lucas lives in Kentucky or something. Like he's yeah. literally going on vacation, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. and he's still coming. He, I mean, he said, look, I'm still coming. Um, <laughs> he, can you give me some places to bring? Because he's bringing his kids. Where can I go? I'm like, okay, you can go to Margaritaville, which is a, which is a kid-friendly place. You, yep. can go to the, you can go to the Mississippi Aquarium. There's stuff you can do, you know. So I think that speaks volumes for the Mississippi Gulf Coast, you know. It's a, it's a great place. Obviously, I'm biased to it. I love, I love, the, I love the Gulf Coast, and uh, it, it has a lot to offer. Absolutely, absolutely. So as we continue, guys, we're going to take a quick break right here, and uh, we will be right back with more from Galen Rollison uh, pertaining to 2023. Don't go anywhere. While you're here, hit the like and subscribe button. We will be right back to you. BRG Motorsports 3D Printed Racing Parts are able to provide you with whatever you desire to enhance your drag racing operation. Items like safety belt magnets, nitrous bottle holders, and even quick release delay box mounts are able to be obtained from BRG Motorsports 3D printer racing parts. Have a look at top selling items such as helmet hooks and steering wheel hooks, which are proven to make it easier to maneuver throughout your race car. You can contact BRG Motorsports 3D printer racing parts at telephone number 765-729-1177. TSR Racing Products is everything you need to make your Power Glide Turbo 350, Turbo 400, and 727 transmissions the best they can be on the street or at the track. With exceptional products, customer service, and over 30 years of experience, TSR Racing Products is always available to help their customers with any of their transmission needs. In-house machining ensures you only receive the best products from TSR Racing. Visit TSR Racing Products at tsr-racing.com or give them a call at 800-394. 5889. Proform wedge locking header bolts are the last set of header bolts you'll ever need. Each bolt comes pre assembled with a pair of special locking washers. Wedge locking header bolts are manufactured with grade 8 steel and come in 1 inch and 3 quarter inch links. All right, all right. Welcome back. It's the Going Bracket Racing YouTube channel, Facebook page, wherever you're tuning at. If you're on the podcast, I know you guys are listening in. Thanks for uh, listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for making comments. And uh, again, thank you to Proform Parts, um, um, Syntex Printing. We got BRG. Thanks to all of our sponsors, TSR, for everything that you do to keep uh, keep the doors on, keep the lights open. For us to be able to interview someone like Galen Rollison from out there at 
the the new track owner of Gulfport. Uh, do you call it Gulfport Dragway or is it just Raceway? How do, how do you name it? Gulfport Dragway. Gulfport Dragway. Didn't want to mess that up sitting here, but and so we know that the, we talked about the, the 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 top bulb and the foot brake one fifties. Do you think the foot brake side of bracket racing is growing? Uh, and and I'm gonna piggyback that with something that uh, Jed mentioned that really stuck to me is Jed and JJ we had them both on, and uh, they mentioned in their mind frames that if you can win in bottom bulb drag racing, you can win in any type of drag racing bracket side that is. Comment on that as well if you can. I don't disagree with that because I think some of your best all around drivers are the racers that can do it off the top or bottom. You know, right. I mean, Scotty Richardson, Peter Biondo. I mean, there's, those are probably two of the best to ever do it, you know, and they won doing top or bottom. We've got local racers like Thomas Holly and Danny Paul. I think they're some of the best down here because they can win off the top and bottom. So I absolutely agree with that. If you can win off the bottom, um, your likelihood of being successful off the top is, I mean, you, 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 you should be successful, you know, <laughs> and the proof is in the pudding. I mean, when, when you got two of the best to ever do it, I mean, that, that I think that it ends and begins with that, you know? Right. And obviously you, you, you have a, you have a soft spot or at least a understanding that the foot brake class is something that you need to pay attention to as well as you've been holding like you said this foot brake race for quite some time you think the foot brake class is getting bigger i think it is it's grown within the king of the coast series um if you look at uh the world foot brake challenge and what they're able to pull off every year it seems like that deal's growing and growing and growing um yes i think that i think as as we go down the road things kind of get back to the basics sometimes you know and i think foot brake racing is growing and uh, you know, all bottom bowl foot brake it, i think it's all the true grassroots of what we all came from you know so i mean yeah I, I, and i hope it's grow. i hope it grows absolutely i do too man uh you know talking about uh you know a little earlier we were talking about king of the coast and i know that series has been going on for seemingly forever as far as you know me me paying attention and things like that uh, as one of the longtime promoters in in our sport, how do you feel bracket racing has progressed overall in in like the last five years? Because it seems like it's just skyrocketed in the last five years. Yeah, well, you know, in the in the world of big money racing, obviously, you know, it's exponentially grown with that. I mean, just think 10, 15 years ago, they would only be a couple of weekends where you could go race for hundred plus thousand. Now it seems like that's not a big deal anymore. You know, you, people we used to would get excited to go race for a hundred grand, you know, now that's just, Hey, there's a hundred grand. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, I think, I think the sport's grown. Um, I think it's going to continue to grow. I feel like as crazy as it sounds, you know, racetracks have encountered, and I'm speaking from the track side of it now that, the cost to do business has increased exponentially. So to be able to, to be able to adapt to um, absorb that, you have to bring in more capital. And if you want to bring in more capital, you have to do it through entry fees or buybacks. Well, if you do that, you got to raise the purse. True. So I think that, I think maybe that has a little bit to do with it. I, I don't know. Where, uh, where do you see it going in the next five years? Because, you know, I would think, Obviously, with your promotion series and now getting involved with the actual racetrack side of things and things like that, I'm sure you have, you know, some sort of forecasted deal as far as what you, well, I guess what you hope obviously happens is everything just keeps going on a 45 degree angle up. Um, what do you, what do you think it's going to be? Do you think that, uh, do you think things have capped out and they're kind of settling in? Um, do you see exponential growth in the future? What, uh, what do you see happening? I mean, I don't, as in business, you can never, nothing's ever going to continue to be exponential. I mean, it just, it just, it don't work that way. I wish it would, but it's not. I really feel like that on the promotion end of it or the, the track part of it, the tracks that 
work the hardest and do the best they can. I think they're the ones that are going to, you know, put themselves in a situation to be successful. You know, it, it all comes down to who's going to work the hardest, you know. And, you know, as Tom Brady said, if you're going to outwork me, you better be willing to give up your life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know yeah. what? <laughs> Forgot you were a big Tom Brady fan, and I almost wore my Cowboys hat today. I'm a, cl- I'm a closet Cowboys fan. I actually go for the Rams, but I'm right here, so it's hard not to watch the Cowboys play and, what do you man, think about that game last night? Hey man, Cowboys showed up, played well, man. It's Actually um, did, yeah. Dak, Dak Prescott played well, you know. I mean, he showed he, he he was prepared. That whole team played <laughs> well, you know. You know, Tom's getting old. He's forty five now, and he ain't what he used to be. Um, you know, I, I sometimes it's difficult to watch your hero, you know, you know, go through that. But True. you know, as always, he's a class act, and that's why I respect him so much. You know, everybody's doubted him his whole damn career and he's all he's ever done is prove him wrong he ain't the fastest he ain't the strongest he can't throw the ball the farthest he just outworks everybody man and if you can't respect that uh, you know that's on you <laughs> hey he's the um, fastest gun in the west too man he get that ball out faster than anybody I've ever seen so he's the goat for a reason I'll, I'll call that out here i'm also gonna call out while i'm in here jared pennington's post here he says galen has done amazing things for our sport i can't agree with you more there um, we are fortunate to have him in the position that he occupies. I, I agree with that as well. And Casey's hitting the nails on the head when he says experience could be very, very, very crucial coming up. Our growth is is what I'm seeing, and I'm sure everybody else here that's listening and chiming in, and Casey and you, Galen, are seeing is exponential growth. And and we kind of touched on what that's all attributed to. So uh, te- themes like the... Te- Things like the Dream Team Challenge, one of probably one of my favorite races to watch all year, to be honest, uh, is that Dream Team Challenge. And um, I know we've touched on it before, but if you want to highlight that race real quick, hey, the floor is yours. That Dream Team yeah. Challenge well, definitely seems to you know, be. It's cool that Jared. You know, it, it cool that Jared says those nice things about me. You know, again, it's just not me. It's, it's the team that I have. Again, sometimes a lot of times I get more credit than I deserve. You know, but. It's cool that when your peers that you do stuff, you know, say nice things about you because, you know, whether all the money you made or lost at the end of the day really means anything. You right. can't take it with you. But when people say nice things about you, you know, again, if you if you chase the dream and not the money, you know, the money's going to take care of itself. And I've always felt that way. And I'll continue. I t- taught my kids that. And But um, as far as the dream team race, you know, that is – that and the junior dragster race now are my two favorite events. That dream team race, Jared can speak on it. He's won the he's won the top ball portion of it. It um that's a unique event, you know. And again, that race has been replicated a lot lately, you know. And it's a uh, it kind of brings the world of you know, IHR and NHRA team finals, WDRA team finals to big money bracket scene and it's fun watching these racers that travel the country or locally that beat up on each other on a every saturday night basis or wherever they're racing now they're teaming up and now they're having to not win for themselves but also for their team and i've said this a hundred times um and i'll say it again a couple years ago jason lynch had a team was on a team and you know after the race was over, he said we were in a group talking, and he mentioned that you know he is his credential list is is he's Jason Lynch, you know he's one he's just about won everything. He says I staged up in 100k finals, NHRA Super Comp final. I staged up in a lot of stuff, and it really didn't get to me. But when I was on the Dream Team, and it was tied two to two, and I hadn't turned the wind light on for my team to advance, he said that made me sit up a little bit more, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I think that says everything. And we have us, Britt and I, and our, um, our, how we promote that race, we're going to have to do more focus on the backside of it, the, the return road. Because when those racers race, they go down the track, they haul, not haul, but, but they, fast as they can, they get back to the, down the return road, throw their stuff off, and run to the fence back and cheer each fence. other on. Yeah. That yeah. is the coolest thing ever, man. Watching those guys cheer for each other, man. It's it, it it's it, it's fun. And watching it on Motor Mania, 
it's great, but you got to be there in person to feel it, man. It's it's different, you know. Yeah, it's cool. cool. Because it's uh, you know, it's almost like you guys were talking about football earlier. It's almost like a sporting event that you're participating in. It's like your team's in the Super Bowl, and you know, like you said. Jason Lynch has experienced every sort of type of stress that has to do with racing, be it broken cars, making it to the next round, uh, winning championships, winning mega races that can pay houses off, all this stuff. But then also what people forget about is these teams get to say, okay, guy number one, you go first. This guy goes second. This guy goes third. Well, if you're that last guy and it is two to two and you're the last guy, you're like, Man, I don't want to let everyone down because no, no. you're in that position because you're supposed to be able to bail them out. Right? Yeah, typically, typically, a lot of times the the team they try to figure out who their best guy is and they'll either put them first or last. You know, they wow. they want to go up one nothing or they want that they want that. Well, if we can get two to two, we know we can win with with our last our last person. So it's a big responsibility. It is fun watching that race unfold, especially the first round because. These when we we do the ladder the night before in the stage lane, so that everybody knows who's running and how it's going to pan out. And you, that night, you could see the teams off to their side that night, you know, going over scenarios. Well, if we win the coin toss, we pick first. We're going to pick them because we feel like they're going to put that person up, man. And they come up, they come to the stage lanes with a list that long of, of scenarios, man. It, it's, and they look they look like Bill Belichick out there trying to <laughs> you know, trying to figure figure something out, man. And that's cool. That's what we want, you know. I mean, and when they start making their picks, you know, they, they get with each other, they get off in a huddle. You want to do that? You know, it's just, it's a cool event from start to finish, man. And uh, we are so lucky to be able to put that event on. Definitely, Very. man. It would, it would be awesome to see more of the uh, staging lane side of things and see see those people and maybe maybe stick a microphone in the middle of the group over there and see like, hey, what are they what are they saying? What are, what is their idea and things like that. It is, and we've done that a little bit, where you know, but you know, we've got a great team now. We got Jake Hodge. That you know, Jake is he's really good at articulating a situation. Um, we have Mad- uh, Madison Ellison now, who you know is taking over the reins on our social media, and uh, she she did our she did that really cool staging lane shot at the junior race, nice. and she's going to have. I, I know she's going to help take us to the next level. So yeah, I agree. We need to get more of the inner workings to everybody to show everybody how cool that experience is. So next year you say, I got to get a team in that. I see Britton here saying too, you don't have to be friends to be teammates. Uh, keep that in <laughs> mind. Wrong, that's it's kind of, that's hey, pretty spot on. <laughs> that is, uh, hey, that's fact. I, I'm not saying any names, but there's two guys on the same team. I'd have bet my house. They would no way they'd be on the same team, <laughs> but they were on the same team. And one of them had to win because they were fifth to turn the wind light on to win. And they actually gave each other a high five. I'm oh, like, wow. you'll never see that again. Wow. <laughs> you know, it, you put it's, enough. It's cool. And, yeah. You speaking put- of the dream. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of the speaking of the dream team, you know, last year, you know, weather was a was a big influencer. And we had always because we had junior drafters part of it, and we had a post of 570, and it was a struggle weekend that weekend, and we felt like that, you know, nobody really got, you know. No, nobody got what they should have got because, you know, some of it was 570 cars. Some of it was the weather. We just did the best we could. So Britt and I made the decision to take the junior dragster dream team portion of it and transfer it to this year's, the 2023 Christmas on the Coast junior race. So if everybody thought the Christmas on the Coast junior race was big the first year, that's just a sample size of what we're, what's going to happen this year. So oh. that helped take those juniors because at that dream team race in May, juniors were having to wait six, seven hours, make a pass. And oh. that, that, that didn't sit well with them. And I agree with them. So we felt like if we could put them on their own date, have a dream team race, that would help free things up, even for the big cars. So it was, so this year, the dream team in May, will just be the top bulb and foot brake part of it and the junior dragster part portion of it is being moved to the uh to the uh, Christmas on the coast junior race. Which is cool for the kids also because then they get to be their own show. You know mm-hmm. right. back to everybody then. Right. Yes, yes. So it's um I think that's a win win for, for everybody. It what it'll help again get the race done at a manageable hour 
and uh, everybody can, you know, we can have a golf cart races because in Brit Zone, <laughs> we've, we've kind of lost um, our luster on our golf cart races. We felt like we had the best golf cart race there was. <laughs> and we haven't been able to do it in a long, long time. And Britt keeps reminding me, dude, you not forget we had the best golf cart race ever. I'm like, I know. But now, so um, hopefully we can get a couple of those in this year. <laughs> Get the dream team golf cart racing going on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's hey, that's an idea. Dream hey. Brit, write that down, Brit. <laughs> yep. So, is there anything we missed about uh, GABR or King of the Coast for 2023? What else is uh, what else is coming that uh, we haven't talked about yet? Well, Gulfport Dragway um, uh, has transitioned to the WDRA brand. Will be WDRA brand and. We, 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 made, we made that transition based on one thing, is our relationships with the people that are within the WDRA. And that's the reason why, you know, I'm a very loyal person. You know, I, I mean, I try to take care of the people that take care of me. You know, relationships are important to me. Um, not that they shouldn't be for others, but that's just me. It matters to me that the people that help pave the way to get to where I have, there's a little bit of a loyalty involved with that. And that's why we're WDRA, and I hope that, and then I hope all the organizations do well. I hope NHRA does well. I hope RHRA does well. I hope WDRA does well. I hope they all do well because when they all do well, the racers win. That's fact. So That's right. we're going to be WDRA. We've got some WDRA races, points races this year. Gulfport Dragway will be hosting the WDRA team fi- Southern Team Finals this year, which is, you know, which is a feather in our cap. Um, we have some other big events for Gulfport Dragway this year. I mean, we have JJ's Arm Drop come in. We have um, we have a big Mardi Gras race, in, uh, which will be a heads up grudge race, um, which we're getting off into that world, which has been a big learning um, experience so far. Um, Scooby Watson has helped us out a little bit, a lot. I should say about that. Um, uh, Britt Brit was able to uh, get the. Uh, um, Southeast Gassers to come to Gulfport Dragway during Cruise in the Coast weekend. So that event might be the Huge. biggest spectator event ever attended at Gulfport. That that event's got like, oh my goodness, spectators written all over it. So um, we being on the track, running the racetrack now, you know, we have to integrate all all the worlds of racing, and that was. I know a lot of people had a lot of concern outside bracket racing and go port that these three bracket guys were going to make it a black bracket exclusive track. Hmm. And, you know, our grassroots are bracket racing, but we wanted the racers to feel like all the racers to feel like there are events at Gulfport dragway that they could participate in because we want them, you know, um, it's one of those things that where you have to grab your customers and pull them close to you because if you don't, someone else is going to scoop them up and we don't want that to happen. Yeah, next thing yeah, you know, man. you're gonna have a no prep car running for twenty five grand because it's twenty five thousand dollars. So, hey, yeah, well come on out. That's what, people, uh, that's what people don't pay enough attention to, in my opinion. Is everybody's so worried about hating on, you know, bracket racers hate on heads up racers, and then heads up racers that the pro light guys hate on the no prep guys, and it's like you realize that we're all the same people and drag yeah. racing is actually the most accessible sport as far as motorsports in the entire world. Like mm-hmm. you can't afford the circle track race. I talk about this. I feel like every other show, but a set of tires costs more than our entry fees that these circle track races right. burn up per race. You know? Yeah, I agree with you. I think that the pro mod world, the grudge world, the no prep world, the bracket world, all those racers have unique, have unique talents that, make them good at what they do and i think they also i think they all need to be celebrated um because they're good at what they do i mean to go no preparation is you know that's that that you know that's that's a that's different you know Mm. i saw that video where they were racing pro mods on a look like it it was like a half circle man i'm like i thought i was i I, this morning i knew i was a little bit tired but when i saw that video (laughs) i had to I, I was looking at it. I had like, what am I looking at? What is you know? this? Yeah, that was cool, man. No uh-huh. prep on a on an angle, man. I'm like, that's nah. different. You know, I don't thing, want nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, man. That's the thing is though, is that you'd watch it though, and so would I. That's right. that's the difference. Yeah. Oh that, yeah. I, don't think, you I, know? I might even pay to watch that. I mean, yeah, right. Very cool. Right. You know, it, I might pay a little bit for that, but um, 
yeah, go for it. We, we just want everybody to know that, you know, that there's an event for them. And, you know, we care about all the racers. We want them to come to Gulfport Dragway. We want, we want our locals to be proud that Gulfport Dragway is our home track. And we invite everybody to come to Gulfport Dragway. Um, we will treat you like family. We, we, we want you to feel like we want you to know that you're wanted. And that's, that's the main point. Well, I heard that. Well, before we get out of here, because, you know, we come up on an hour so quick. I mean, this thing could keep going a couple more hours, all I care. I can right. do it easily, right? But who else you got to thank, man? I know there's some some um, some things behind the scenes that everybody might not know. I know the flyer covers the sponsors up, but uh, who you got to shout out? Man, we got so many. Well, first of all, our sponsors, uh, Mosier Engineering, SDPC Race Shop, Larice Motorsports Insurance, um, FTI, FTI on site on the Great American end. We also have Renegade Race Fuel, which is their official fuel of uh, Great American Bracket Races and will be the official fuel of uh, Gulfport Dragway. On the King of the Coast side, we have DTE, Dave Mercer Racing Engines, Pierce Automotive, Bone Shaker Motorsports. Uh, we also have um, Barry Performance, um, uh, Velocity Racing Carbs, uh, it just goes on and on and on. And we have so many great sponsors, and we couldn't do without them. Um, as far as our staff, again, uh, it, you know, I can't thank Britt and Tommy enough for what they do. Um, my wife, more than anything, without my wife, uh, I'd be nothing. <laughs> you know? uh, my uh, wife is, I mean, that, that's, that's, she's my ride or die, man, <laughs> you know. She supported me through thick and thin, and I could never repay her for what she has to put up through me um, as far as forgetting stuff. She's always been there to have my back in tight situations, and uh, that's my girl, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. um, um, my, my, my daughter, my daughters Morgan and Kendall, you know, they work that they work for us. I know. So, I mean, there's so many great people, um, and uh, it's a, uh, Thank my family, you know, without family, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a different world when you, when you don't have your family behind you. So, uh, and I want to thank you guys, man. I mean, what y'all do to promote our sport, you know, um, people don't understand. And I don't understand how long it takes just to prepare to put something like this on. I know you guys just don't turn the computer on. Let's go guys. I mean, there's hours and hours on prep upon preparation for you guys to do what you do. And if anybody hasn't told you, thank you for what you do. I'm telling you, thank y'all for what y'all do. Please don't quit doing it because our sport needs more people like y'all. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm not going anywhere. I don't think Casey is because if we weren't yeah. doing it right here, well, we'd probably be on the phone doing it. So it's more fun to do it right <laughs> here anyway. So Casey, what you got in closing, man? I'm, I'm out of words. <laughs> hey, just, as always, we got to thank those sponsors, man. TSR Racing Products, Champs Performance Parts, Driven Racing Oil, Syntex Printing, Ken Jones Performance Team 14, Great American Bracket Races, might as well throw them in, King of the Coast, Gulfport Dragway, Proform Parts, and BRG 3D Printed Parts. And other than that, we'll see you next Tuesday. See you thank next you Tuesday, guys. guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining.